Hey everyone, welcome to Pop XP. And before the show starts, make sure to click that subscribe button and click the bell to get notifications when we go live and we upload awesome new content. And don't forget, if you can, make sure to share our stream on all your social media outlets. We appreciate it, and thanks for helping us grow the Pop XP channel. Hey, what is going on, YouTube? It's the brain of the mainframe here now, Scout with the Pop XP. And joining me is our pop culture expert, the professor, Mr. At Ununboxing, Mr. Brian Blevins. That's, me. That's, That's me. you, bro. That's you. Welcome to our dystopian people. Look at that. Your waste will be my earth. Oh, wow. Wow. Blevins, man, what's going on? Dude, not much, man. Just, uh, Dude, enjoying all this, uh, just enjoying all this weather, looking at what's happening in this new year, uh, man, looking at all the things that are happening for Pop XP, which is just absolutely just, astounding. I mean, incredible. Hopping. Dude, poppin'. yeah, they popping with a capital P, you know what, what I'm an saying? explosion in just the past, like, 48 hours. Man, like a little I, levy broke. I tell you what, man. Like, uh, you know, it's Valentine's Day, Dave. But you gotta, you gotta get up and look in the mirror and be like, man, it's a good day to be Nile Scala. Yeah, it's a good day to be Brian Blevins. That's what uh, I'm saying. It's a, it's a decent day to be Brian Blevins, but it's, it's definitely a better day to be Nile Scala, man. You, you got, got some everything happening. We got some great things, and we'll uh, we'll talk about. I'm glad, those I'm glad we're friends. Show. I just want to say that I'm glad we're friends because hey, you know, if like, I go to the top, you, you go to the, the top. Next, when you hit that next level. I'm I hey, hope you, I hope you bring me up. Look, with you looking you. at me? Big guy, you, you know? looking at me? You looking at me? <laughs> if I go to the top, you go to the top, dude. Because we like America, being on top, America, man. You know what I mean? They say there's only room at the top. I'm like, not my top. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, now all the viewers out there, guess which top, top we're top. talking about? Let's guess which top we're talking about. But man, I'm super pumped. I'm super pumped. I have been friends with our guest on Facebook for a long time. And my buddy, your buddy, Jim Valentino, reached out and said, there's this amazing new book coming out. You know, you do you know this guy? I'm like, I know this guy. Who do you think I am? I Mr. know this Valentino. I know this guy, too. I, know I, used guy. To, I used to read one of his books all the time. I thought it was amazing. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited to talk about it. We're going to get into a whole. This He's got a series come out. It's a series premiere that's going to be hitting comic shops. It's 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 there in the previews catalog. So without further ado, everyone, please let me welcome. Mr. Jimmy Robinson to the show. Right. Jimmy. Hey guys. Yes. Nice. Welcome, nice. man. Welcome. Nice to be here. Nice, Dude, to, be here. nice to have you. Right yes, on. definitely. You know, I've been, you know, I've been following a lot of your work on social media. You mm -hmm. know, I reached out to you, friend requested you a couple of years ago. You accepted. I'm like, yes. And mm -hmm. I've been familiar with some of your work. Wasn't familiar with all the stuff you did, but I've definitely been caught up on it. And what we're going to get into today, which for those out there that are wondering and probably saw in the thumbnail, is we're going to be talking Junk Rabbit number one, which is the new series. And we were given uh, an advanced reading of it. And oh my gosh, dude, I was blown away from it. I can't wait to dive into that. But with a you... book of that caliber and that much talent in it, I mean... <laughs> When did the radioactive spider bite you, man? Where did it bite nah. you? What happened? Wait, when did the radioactive rabbit bite you? <laughs> yeah, the radioactive <laughs> rabbit. Yeah, where on the doll did the radioactive <laughs> rabbit bite you? Where on the doll did the rabbit bite you? You don't have to tell us, just point. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're asking where did it, the idea come from or where? What, no, your origin story, man. How did you uh, get into like comics, man? Was it something oh, yeah, early yeah. on in life? Oh my God, dude. Yeah. That's my villain origin story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, you know, I didn't get into comics until I was like my late teens. So I didn't like, like a lot of people grow up with comics too much. I mean, I always drew some kind of form of comic, but, uh, I, I wasn't following characters or anything. I wasn't buying books and all that stuff. So I basically would see stuff on television and I would like draw what I see. 
like a favorite scene and then I draw the next scene and then I draw something that comes after that. And before I knew it, I was making sequential art and not even knowing it, but I was just, you know, just doing that. My mom always supported my work. So, you know, she would just supply me with pencil and paper and I would just draw and do all kind of stuff. But like I said, it wasn't until my late teens. And that's when, um, you know, this is going to be kind of weird. I got a, a comic book angel come to me kind of a thing. So my mom at her job, she had a coworker who also owned a comic book store. Oh wow. You know, he had like a day job or whatever. And she showed him some of this stuff I was drawing and all that. And he's like, oh my God, this guy needs, you know, he's he's trying to do something. <laughs> and so he would send at, at my mom's job, he would give her books to then give to me. And he would put like little post-its on it, like, you know, see how this looks or see the color of that, see how this background works here. And it's like, I, to this day, never met this guy. <laughs> really? Don't know who he is, but he's like supplied me with like the entire George Perez Titan run, you know, <laughs> you know, he wow. supplied me with all these different books and all from a whole range of publishers and all with little post-its, even even right down to you know the type of paper that started getting used, like the Baxter quality paper and all that yeah. stuff. They started getting out of newsprint and everything like that, and the coloring techniques. And these were just things I was just like, I didn't know this, I didn't know that, and I didn't know these characters. And it was just really, really, really weird. <laughs> I, to this day, I've never met this guy. I don't know the store he owned. Uh, my mom, you know, she's like, oh, he was just, you know, some guy that was at my job. And, you know, I'm like, but as far as, far as I know, comic book angel. And Crazy. Uh, he was Dr. Frankenstein and you're the, you're Frankenstein's <laughs> monster. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. He molded me in a way. And it was kind of neat because it didn't put me on like, like, you know, how some guys are like Spider-Man was their childhood character or Batman was or something. And that uh, I didn't have that. I didn't have a, a character icon, so I was just kind of all over the place, which is kind of why my style is kind of all over the place. But uh, you know, and and then you know, I was just skateboarding my life away for a while, and then you know, <laughs> I really didn't get started until like my early thirties, and I just said, oh, you know, wow. I'm gonna start doing my own book, and so I just set out and I started doing stuff, and I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I literally, you want to know origin story? It's, it is Jimmy figured out everything on his own kind of a thing. That's kind of why I do everything on my book because I had to figure everything out. So yeah, it was really weird. And I finally got around to self publishing. I think in nineteen ninety four, mm -hmm. I made a book called Cyber Zone, black and white book. It, it ran about seven eight issues, and uh, yeah, I mean I was so green. I mean, it was like I I, I made the book right. <laughs> Thirty-two pages, cover to cover, color covers, black and white interiors, wow. everything. Wow. The entire thing, printed it, everything, and then I hand sold it to comic book stores. I would like go to my local shop and and do some kind of consignment thing. And I remember the first store I went into, the guys like, "Well, this is not." You know, this is, you know, this is not bad. This is something, you know, this is, you know, you're going some, you got some idea going on here. Have you put this in diamond? And I said, what's a diamond? <laughs> 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 I mean, I had completely made a, a whole comic book and not even known the entire process, distribution process or anything about comics. I knew nothing. <laughs> so I, you know, I just kind of learned it that way. And then I got a job in a printing company for like 13 years, learning that kind of side of it, the, the, the production side of it. And because of that, I was able to cut a lot of material costs down. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was able to send Quebecor uh, just full materials, things that most people would have to pay for. You know, mm -hmm. this was back in the days when things were shot in negatives, mm -hmm. you know, on Ruby Lift and Goldenrod and stuff like that, uh, <laughs> you know, with screen tones and all that stuff. And um, yeah, I would do all that, you know, office supplies. <laughs> 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 I'll do all that on, on the side of my job and I would just uh, send them whole books and then they print them. And, I'd get books back and then it, it's 
guys, it's really weird. I it's it's really hard for me to explain. Yeah, but it didn't. Well, you're doing a good a job. Tool or didn't <laughs> have a, an icon, or didn't have somebody I wanted to emulate. Mm -hmm. And you know, thank God for the image guys. They really changed the face of the comic industry in the 1990s. And it was because of them that I was able to actually find a foothold for what I was doing. Because back then, before then, I should say, you know, it's like if you didn't draw in the Marvel style or something in that orbit of the mm -hmm. Marvel style, you weren't getting anywhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, the common thing back then was, you know, oh, that's nice. That's great. Your portfolio is awesome. Can you draw like Jim Lee? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? You draw like Jim Oh, you can't? <laughs> All right. Well, uh, next, <laughs> right? It, it, yeah. That's how it went. And we got to tell you gotta... what it is. It is absolutely blows my mind when you look at history and you look at all the people that have done these amazing things, like literally all the geniuses and the people that have brought such change to the industries. They were, they're all, all their names are Jim. It's either Jim, right. Jimmy, or James, right? right? Every single one of them. I mean, it's crazy. Like you got Jim Starlin, you got oh my god, Jimmy Robinson, you got Jim Valentino, you got Jimmy Palmiotti, you have James mm -hmm. Catapano, you have I mean, like Jesus, like like I mean, literally, like it's just tons and tons of people named Jim, Jimmy, or James. Like maybe there's something. Yes, we in got the, the short end of the stick, Blevins. Dude, yeah, yeah, Blevins. Blevins. Name, you know, names are kidding. I mean, I Blevins are river. doing big things out there. <laughs> you guys are crazy. <laughs> we, we got a, a great comment here from David Van Dyke. Ah. He was a genius, mad scientist, and cool uncle all wrapped into one. Thanks. Nice, oh, that's nice. awesome. David's cool. a good guy. I'm trying to um, figure out where I could wiggle him in on a cover, a variant cover or something like that for Junk Rabbit. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm trying to figure that out, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. David's a great guy. He's uh, he's working hard. He, he actually has a uh, did some cover work for uh, Dark Horse. Oh, nice, awesome. Yeah, so he's, nice. Uh, yeah, he's 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 moving along. <laughs> Good for him. Good for him. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. getting back to to your origin story, so you just kind of pounded the streets. You were figuring it out on your own, yeah. finding some in ways into into you know getting your books out there. Um, when did you hit what you would consider your big break? <laughs> uh, big break. Remember Comics Buyer's Guide? Yes. Yeah. So uh, I used to, well, when I was self-publishing, you know, they would write reviews of my book every now and then. They're like, this is a guy to watch or blah, blah. And uh, I think I hit issue six or hit issue seven of my self-published book, Cyber Zone. Hmm. And then I was like, you know, this just isn't, working you know or you know the, the numbers are just going down every every issue you know because you know it's comics duh yeah, <laughs> nobody yeah. knows anybody and all that stuff and it was like i said back in the days before uh image when you know uh, independent books were really hard to sell <laughs> uh and so in, a, in an act of hubris i just wrote to comics buyers guide I think saying something along the lines of, well, I'm going to call it quits for a while. You know, I'm going to, I'm getting out of the game until I figure out what's going on or whatever, you know, cause like I did, like I said, I didn't know what I was doing. I thought I was doing it wrong. And three days later, Jim Valentino <laughs> just reaches out to me and says, Hey man, I heard, um, I, I heard you're, you're, you're trying to leave comics and fly kind of a thing. <laughs> and so he, you know, he, he just like, Bring that over here. So he was starting up something called the non-line back then, because at that time he was publisher for Image, which was black and white, non-superhero books. He was trying to do something called the non-line, and he was finding and looking for creators who were doing something different. And uh, I was lucky to fit that bill at the time. And, you know, I thank Jim Valentino for <laughs> exactly where I'm sitting at right now. <laughs> um, so. That was that would be what I would consider the kind of the the break of sorts because I had no idea people even knew what I was doing or I didn't know I, I didn't know people were actually watching because I was getting you know I, I had a, a, a Dark Horse reached out to me um, um, Slave Labor Graphics reached out to me I'm like I didn't know these people were watching what I was doing kind of a thing it was it was really bizarre I was just living in my own little bubble there trying to yeah 
figure did things you, out. <laughs> did, you, did you bring printing? Did you bring new printing things to them as well? I know you. I know they came after you for the, uh, you know, for your for your work as well. But I mean, like you, you said to yourself, you spent all that time working in print and everything. Did you bring new ideas to them that maybe they hadn't seen before? Um, kind of. Uh, when I was doing my self published book, yeah. Um, matter of fact, it landed me on a couple of panels with Quebecor on the Procon series back in the day um, because I was working on an experimental technology which basically became Photoshop. (laughs) So when I was in the printing industry for like 13 years or so, this was back in the day, like I said, of film and all that, but it was right at the fork of digital. And before Photoshop, there was this thing, proprietary system called the Repronic 2000. (laughs) And it was at that time, this revolutionary machine that only had like 24, you know, like a a couple of dozen operators across the country who can work this computer system. I mean, it was like the old days in the old um, 1950s or 60s sci-fi movie where there's this one room with this giant bank of computers spinning and stuff like that. (laughs) I mean, it's this huge room all by itself. And then on the next to that was this other room in a neutral gray zone with this monitor and a, and a light board with a cursor and i had to you know i was trained to uh, manipulate images on that and that was like state-of-the-art technology then i mean it was like this massive thing um and that i brought to my work at quebecor which was different for printing because i was doing things that nobody had seen before because i had access to this powerful tool you know, then Photoshop came out, you know, two years later or whatever. <laughs> and then everybody could do it. <laughs> yeah, but, Neil, Ble- Neil Blevins was a big push of Photoshop. Blevins. Nice. <laughs> no relation. I don't know. Yeah. It, it, it helped a lot. He's a, he's a Neil. Like, he's a Neil, so it doesn't matter. But <laughs> Well, I, since I was at the printing company, I also helped Image a couple of times because I would shoot some negatives. Mm-hmm. or do some film adjustments or do stuff on digital for them. So there was some stuff, Scott Morse, I did, I helped, uh, Leah Hernandez. Uh, there, was, there was some stuff that they would send to me, I would shoot and I'd send it back and it went through the printing process. So I was on the side using the office supplies again. <laughs> that was the printing side, the technology. Now that, that helped a lot. That was, that was weird now that I think about it. Yeah, but then, like I said, Photoshop came along, and then they turned that whole giant computer room into a storeroom. <laughs> literally, yeah. I mean, literally, they're storing FedEx boxes. And did you have to go into a clean room before you went in there? This sounds like just this. You yeah, I know, right? Giant, like a big Tyvek giant, suit like, on and everything. Like lit board on the ground, like this giant light board and a little yeah. monitor that's green flickering up and down. <laughs> no, no, but I did get to dress up in suit and tie. Nice. Like, you no, know, it was like one of the, you know, the thing that was like the hot shit back then. I, it was just, it was really. And one of their main clients was Playboy back in the day, so it was like, you know, you know, you hear about how they would airbrush things and on Playboy magazines. <laughs> that was some of the technology that was being used that they had to fix the models. It got on. got put to good use, is what you're saying. <laughs> well, I wasn't. I, I didn't have the Playboy account. No. I, <laughs> I was like, in I gotta go to that work. department was so slow it took them forever to turn things around. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I was in charge of all the junk mail you guys got. So every Safeway, Lucky's, grocery, Macy's, department store ads, all that stuff you get in your mailbox, that was me. <laughs> that was that was my com- the company that I worked for. We would put together all those grocery circulars and print them literally in the millions. And supply all of California with wow with uh wow. with these ridiculous <laughs> ads, but you know, hey, I'm like, hey, I could also use this for comics. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, there you go. That's that's some of the stuff I brought in. That was fun. Cool. And we got another question here from David. He says, "Oh my God. what tricks from that time does Jimmy now use in his digital work? Like, is his understanding of the printing process give him an insight or change uh, his approach to his digital work?" Yeah, the um, it 
it does. And a lot of the process of, 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 of four color offset printing is still used today, even with digital technology. You need to understand saturation levels. You need to understand how to trap color under a black, you know, stuff like that. You need to understand the percentage values of what can and what, do, what does and what doesn't show up on print. Um, and just how to play around with it, you know? So it's, uh, yeah. What? Oh, no, I was... Oh, you just did it. Sorry. You're just saying yeah, hi to, I was to the, the chat. chat. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah a lot of production stuff, uh, you know, under understanding, you know, how to work one and a half times up so it's reduced back down. You know, I used to letter, hand letter on the board. You know, now I'm doing digital lettering. You know, it's mm -hmm. like all these things I had to learn, the width, the, the, the line width, the, you know, all these things <laughs> were just ingrained in my brain, you know, YMCK, all this stuff, you know, <laughs> the entire Pantone <laughs> scheme, schematics and everything. It's just, um, it still helps me today. So uh, like this Junk Rabbit's my first book I'm doing completely digital. Prior to that, everything was, you know, traditional on paper or something. Mm -hmm. And then I would scan it in and I tweak stuff in Photoshop, but this time it was completely digital. So, I'm still using some techniques mm -hmm. that I need to understand yeah. <laughs> because so, I'm also doing some weird stuff with junk rabbit too. You know, this, this whole sepia tone layout background, matte background things, whatever, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, it was, it was, Oh, Alberto. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. We got Marco Sharpo. Uh, Jump wow. like wicked upon a yeah. closer look. It's it's an awesome book. Thank you now now you're doing all digital, so you know yeah. what what are the tools that you're using going all digital? That was yeah, I'm on an iPad Pro. I'm on an yeah. iPad Pro right now with an Apple Pencil in Clip Studio Paint. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> isn't that, um, isn't wow. that great iPad Pro? I mean, that this is, is just the, amazing. That, that's what I love about like independent comics, right? Because we're huge proponents of crowdfunding here. This channel started, the original name of this channel is Crowdfunding Comics. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're huge in the whole independent realm. And I think it's incredible today that, you know, literally with an iPad, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a premium product, but it's like a flawless product. You don't have issues with it really or anything, but you could literally create your entire comic book on that. Even if you did, you know, rough, you know, your roughs and scan them in, you could then import them into your iPad and literally do all of, all your ink, digital inking, all your flats, then fine tune all your color, everything, right. letter it. You can do it all on there and then create the file and send it out for print. You know, yeah. and it, it's unbelievable. And now with like, you know, Epson's line of like, you know, workforce printer, large format printers and whatnot. I mean, you can now scan all your 11 by 17s. And it's just, it's so incredible, I think, where technology has come that it's actually the most costly thing of making a comic book nowadays, the time that it's going to take to do it. Because for literally like 2000 bucks, right? You could get you yourself a good large format printer, the right. iPad, and, right. you know, any traditional material you may want, if you want any, go to, you could even just go to Michael's and get it if you want, or one of those stores. And I mean, you can have your book done. It's incredible. Yeah, it is very true. And um, I've been on many panels and discussion groups and, <laughs> you know, I, I, I lay it out. I say, you know, this is a great time to be a creator, mm -hmm. uh, a visual creator, because I mean, the tools I did never, I never had, <laughs> you know, and, and the ability for people to get out there. They don't even have to print it. I mean, the online comics, it's huge. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just, there's so, there's just a wealth of technology, tools, information, and avenues that did not exist in the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the late 80s and early 90s. This, you know, it didn't, I mean, I pounded, you know, I pounded the ground, I pounded the pavement, I got around, but, you know, I was lucky. Yeah. It didn't happen for everybody. But as I like to say also, it's it's not hard. It's not that as as you're saying, Niall, it's not that hard to get in the comics. It's hard to stay in comics. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, oh, hundred percent. That's a good that's, way of that's, putting it. Yes. Yeah, that's that's the real thing. So you can make a comic, even if you know, even if it's just this wow, fantastic comic, it's still only gonna be out and it's only gonna be new that first week. One yeah. Wednesday it comes out or whatever the new month. Yeah, there's all these new days now. <laughs> yeah. And and uh, and then there's just the next comic comes out after it. 
and it's just hard to stay in comics. So, uh, but you know, the avenues that are out there now are just, just tremendous. And I'm so happy to see so many new creators uh, uh, out there. I mean, I, uh, a couple of years ago, I was uh, one of the Eisner judges mm -hmm. and I got to see, you know, the wealth of material out there on every level and, and, and the international stuff. And just, it's just mind blowing. It's really is. It's, um, it was a real privilege to see that and, and be part of that. And, um, really will open up your eyes to the amount of work that's being done out there. Yeah. Yeah. I just, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, speaking of amount of work, I mean, you have been doing a lot in comics. I mean, you have a lot of stuff. I had, you know, a, a lovely care package sent with, uh, you know, a bunch of your trade paperbacks. I mean, you've been, you know, working on a lot of stuff now and, uh, you know, let's, if you don't mind, let's, let's dive in a little bit. So I put up some of the, the covers here just so we can kind of go through. I don't have them in any specific order, but you know, first one I have here is, you know, you have Bomb, Bomb Queen. Queen. Bomb Queen, the Queen. Yeah. Um, you want me to say something about her or yeah, just... yeah. <laughs> tell, tell, tell us about Bomb Queen, you know, and, and you know how that series was for you. Well, Bomb Queen, um, was just a joke. It was just a joke I came up with and I just thought it was funny and Valentino just kind of saw me posting this stuff on social media. And he's like, what is that? And so I told him real quick. And he's like, yeah, let's run with that. And and that was all it took. I mean, Jim's great. And we have such a great relationship. We go back such a long ways. And he, you know, people ask me, how do you pitch to Image or all this stuff? And I'm like, I can't really tell you because it's different for everybody. Yeah. And it's really different for me because the relationship I have with Valentino, he trusts me to to do things <laughs> mm -hmm. you know to come up with a con he wants to know what the story is about for one thing you know don't tell him oh there's this girl and she lives here and you know she has a brother and then they go over here and you know there's this big city and he's like no 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 tell me what the story <laughs> is about <laughs> don't tell me the story <laughs> tell me what is it you know he's and blowing stuff up and sometimes <laughs> Sometimes the yeah, clothes so, don't make it. Yeah. Tell me what it's about. So, so it. Like, like Junk Rabbit, you know, it's Swamp Thing meets Robocop. That's that's what it's about. So you get the idea. It's a sci-fi. There's this really bizarre element to it. You know, that's that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. And so with Bomb Queen, yeah, I just said, yes, yeah, there's this crazy character I have, and she's a villain. And that was just kind of, it just kind of ran off. With, I, I said, yeah, it's kind of like, you know how Superman projects Metropolis and Batman has Gotham? Well, there's a city I created and it has a protector too, but the protector is the villain. Yeah. <laughs> it protects the city, and it protects the city from the heroes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that was just all it took. And you know, off it ran. Lots, and, of, lots of blood, lots of blood in that. Lots of explosions. <laughs> well, that was and the nudity, thing. With and Bomb nudity. Queen. Yeah. <laughs> well, with Bomb Queen, since I was telling her from the villain's point of view, I got to do things that you shouldn't do. Right. <laughs> and yeah, I had yeah. to I had to write and think in a way that I normally um, wouldn't. wouldn't think. I, I had to go against my own values. I had to go against, you know, a lot of things I, I didn't believe in <laughs> mm -hmm. because it was about a villain and how the villain always wins. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the thing about Bomb Queen that I got across that I really wanted to get across was that um it wasn't so much about the character. It was about the society that created the character mm -hmm. because so often in comics, the main character is just the focus and everything else is just background setting. And I'm like, but that doesn't, how does that affect society when there's somebody flying around, you know, fighting in the air with other people and stuff like that? <laughs> you yeah. know, how does that affect you as a person on the ground? And when you think about it, if the protector is a villain, the people on the ground, and if they're okay with that, that says a lot about the society <laughs> mm -hmm. that allows a villain to say, yeah, I, I'd rather her protect me than him. <laughs> and so what kind of society would that be? And that's where the whole character of Newport City became not just window dressing, but, you know, a character in itself. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's crazy because like in a lot of the a lot of the stories, like superhero stories, like the the good guys try to stop the bad guys. And the good guys are the ones when they fight the bad guys that cause all the damage. Yeah. You know, like yeah. none of that damage happened until the good guy got involved. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, like I'm not trying to I mean, really think about it. Like none of that damage happened until the until the bad guy got involved. 
And that's the same thing with with her. You know what I'm saying? She's like, hey, in order to protect the city, I gotta blow it up. You know, like yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> gotta love Bob Queen. It was such great. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it was a lot of fun doing the whole reversal thing, and you know, people trying to clean it up. And I got to say a lot about society and pop culture and and villain worship and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It was almost self referential. The whole satirical look at you know. <laughs> popularity and celebrity and stuff like that it's like she can get away with murder literally yeah 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 <laughs> you know? so it was it was just this it, it was just and and because of that it just took off it had it sprouted its own legs it was just a four issue story and then you know it became another four issue story then a five issue arc and then another arc and then you know 30 books later it's like you know yeah, bomb queen <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah you know it's it's it was really bizarre i mean she started out in the george bush era and then you know she went all through the through that presidency and then uh you know obama and then trump and <laughs> you know it's just a lot of crazy things but anyway yeah i don't want to i don't want to yeah. not forever on bomb queen but yeah bomb queen yeah. awesome and then uh five weapons. five weapons i love five weapons um that's one i i'm probably one of the most proud of books uh, I wanted to do a book where the hero didn't have a special ability. Mm-hmm. Kind of like like now I see behind you normal man there on the shelf. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, it's it's yeah. yeah, exactly. Normal man there, Valentino's book. Yeah, I wanted to do something where the hero was the smartest one in the room, was the Sherlock Holmes kind of a type. And mm-hmm. so, you know, it's it's basically an assassin book, a school for assassins. And as one kid comes to school. And he has no weapon. He's in a school where everyone is, is weaponized except him. But yet he keeps winning <laughs> because he can figure out everyone's secrets and stuff, you know, because he's observant, he's smart, and he's on top of things. And through all that whole thing, there's a mystery underneath everything that he uncovers. You know, it's uh, that was a lot of fun because um, um, I had to do a cliffhanger every issue. Mm-hmm. It was a mystery every issue. It was like uh, you remember Ellery Queen, the TV show. I'm not sure if you remember. No, it. I don't. I don't remember that. But whatever that was, it was. It's. It was. It was basically. I was what they call fair play mystery. So in the book, as you're reading it, there are clues in the book, visually in each panel or whatever, that tell you how things are going to get solved. And at the very end of the issue, it turns to you and says, "I know how that's going to happen. I know who did it." Do you? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's that's how it is. With every issue, I had to figure out a mystery that this kid had to solve. And it, it involved all the different five weapons of the school. So the gun club, the knife club, the stick club, the archery club, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. The weapons club. They all all their club presidents he had to go up against. And it was uh it was a lot of fun. I really liked five weapons. Uh it it, it worked. I I like to say it worked. Yeah. How what so what actually so, so five weapons came out in like 2013, right? And then in 2014 they came out with Deadly Class. Did you have anything to do with that? No, I didn't actually. Yeah, I came out just I actually, yeah, I came out a year ahead of um Remender's Deadly Class, yeah. <laughs> and it was one of those just you know, bad timing things. My life is full of bad timing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you guys have, I mean, it's still a great idea. Like, obviously, I just didn't know. It's so weird that they came out so close to each other, you know? Yeah, yeah both image books, too. Yeah, both and, image and, yeah, books. Yeah. yeah, and he got a TV deal out of it, too. Um, uh, yeah, that was cool. Well, Reminder's a good guy. Rick Reminder's a really good yeah. guy. He's, he's cool. I really like him. Uh, but his was more about, you know, it was teen drama and all that stuff, and everybody mm-hmm. was was weaponized. <laughs> Mine was more about how to be smart. You know, if if Sherlock Holmes was in a gunfight, you would still bet on Sherlock Holmes, yeah. even though he yeah. doesn't have a gun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you would still say Sherlock Holmes is going to get out of this. He knows, it. you know. <laughs> so you know, it was just kind of a Encyclopedia Brown kind of stuff, where this kid was just super observant and he just knew all the buttons to push, and he can get out of any situation without mm-hmm. a weapon. And it kind of spun off this uh, Buddhist parable about um, Prince Five Weapons because he got in trouble with this giant monster in the forest or whatever, and he used all his weapons. But it wasn't until he used his mind to talk himself out of it 
which became his sixth weapon, that, you know, it really worked. So it wasn't about the weapons. It's always about the user. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, weapons, yeah. just an extension. The real the real threat is the user. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And then I, another, uh, so, so I've got two more before we jump into Junk Rabbit. Uh, junk Rabbit. The power uh, lines. Yeah, power lines. I pitched that to Valentino. He really liked the concept. Unfortunately, I failed on that one, and I uh, I only got three issues done on that. That that's uh, that really hits me hard sometimes. But the basic concept of that was um, it was a book about race relations. Mm -hmm. It was basically a book about a black kid lives in the urban city or whatever. He has powers, but they only work and they only activate in a in an affluent white neighborhood <laughs> you can only be powerful and useful when he's in this upper class neighborhood <laughs> and coincidentally vice versa there's this this uh, middle-aged white woman who you know fox conservative highbrow whatever who has powers but they only work in the hood <laughs> and it's about how these two come together to say look i have powers you have powers we can help people, but look, we got to get along to do this. And you need to understand if you go to my neighborhood, <laughs> you might yeah. get treated like whatever <laughs> and vice versa. And it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was a ley line. The, the, the title power lines was built on the principle of the ley lines, like power mm -hmm. lines are part of the geog geography and it's connected to a bloodline and base, you know, geography just put people in the wrong economic circumstance on the wrong sides of the line mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah they they it's it, it was a, a good exploration of um uh of, of race i wanted to do an examination of race and whatnot and this is like psh, god what year was that did, did you see what year that was or no uh, i don't recall no <laughs> yeah, yeah it was it was a while back and again bad timing i could have had that could have been ahead of the curve on that could one. you <laughs> do you think you could continue on with that now I like probably many, could. Too many probably, other projects. <laughs> I could probably make a Kickstarter out of it because yeah. it was because the ley line turned out to be a triangle, and it actually it says 2016. Ah, okay. Yeah, because the ley line turned out to be a triangle, and then there was a third party involved, and that ended up being the Native Americans who originally found the ley line, and they want the power back yeah. <laughs> from the people <laughs> who really were here first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Our yeah. Nemesis was a giant sect of wasps. <laughs> what? Wah, wah. Hang on, hang on. I have something for that. I have something for that here. Where is it? Where no, is it? dude, don't even. What? Oh, oh, what? oh, there you go. There you go, Blevins. There you go. Wasps is funny. <laughs> and the last one I have here, man, I want to dive into a bit. Uh, the empty. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, um, pitch to Valentino. This kind of. Uh, another dystopian thing, sci-fi, uh, hundreds of years in the future, dystopian kind of Wizard of Oz journey for these characters. And so, yeah, you end up with somebody who gets, who's in this land of plenty or whatever, and but without giving anything away, ends up in the desolate part of the world. So this becomes the 1% versus yeah. the 99% kind of a thing. And they have to discover why the 90% of the world is just a wasteland and there's this one little paradise <laughs> so that that this person came from and joins up with this kind of a warrior type woman who uh, then sets out on a journey with them. And, you know, like the Wizard of Oz, Dorothy lands in this place, <laughs> picks up some characters along the way as they journey through this wasteland of whatnot to find this person who then explains Oh yeah, well, yeah, you know things are going yeah. bad. And this yeah. is what's going on. <laughs> and the the interiors in that, I mean, I think dude, are dynamite, dude. Thank you. I, I love what you did with this. It's true. So good. I just yeah, that, that one I did dystopian, like I mean, just incredible stuff you did here. Yeah, the insects were all talking and everything. They've got to the point where the insects have evolved in their intelligence and everything like that. Yeah. Uh, also, for that, I didn't use any word balloons. I yeah, I noticed. Yeah, because yeah, I wanted the color palette of the world to really show through 
without having a bunch of white blobs all over the page. And yeah. so um, I just had to really design the artwork and the composition where I made sure there was room for dialogue, free floating, and not have anything behind it, any background that would you know interfere with it. And that was uh, that was a challenge. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Sam. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, that was. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, David says, unfortunately, I've got to bounce. Great show, guys. I'll be catching up, and I'm now subscribed. Thank you, yes. David. I absolutely yes. love Jimmy, and much success to all. Good night, all. Hey, good old David. Right on. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that was the that was the empty, and it was uh, also a lot of fun. And I got to play with evolution, like how people might look hundreds mm -hmm. of years from now. To, you know, if there were forests in really bizarre environmental situations, you know, so the people that lived in the land of plenty, they their eyes had started moving to the side like deers because yeah. you know, they, they were no longer the predator types. <laughs> you know, and the people in the wasteland, their limbs had extended so they're farther from the soil. And it was just mm -hmm. all these bizarre, subtle things I wanted to take a shot at that's all yeah no you did a, you did a great job in that and and this was one the cover actually when, when i got the package this cover just stuck stuck out to me and this was the one that i started diving through first like i said i didn't get through all of them but definitely uh this one right here, and these are these are available everyone so uh you, you can still purchase all these all these books are available um but yeah man it's such great stuff and then obviously bomb queen i dove into a little bit as well and then uh, five weapons, I, I jumped into that, and that's kind of where I stopped. One I didn't get into, which I didn't show up, was um, Evil and Malice Save the World. <laughs> yeah, that was a, my kid's book kind of a thing. Um, two, do two twins who want to be heroes, but they're really bad at it. Yeah, so Evelyn, Evelyn, Evelyn. I have and twins. <laughs> I'm going to read this to them. Oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's perfectly age appropriate because I have a daughter, and at that time I was looking for books. For my mm -hmm. for my daughter and I couldn't find anything. I'm like, I'm gonna make my own. Yeah. So it's basically, yeah, there's a superhero dad. He's a good, kind-hearted superhero dad or whatever. And he has two daughters that he has to raise on his own. So they want to be superheroes, but they're really bad at it because they were raised by villains. And <laughs> because, <laughs> because these other villains come to town and they're real villains. And they're yeah. like, man, if these other villains weren't here, they would leave our dad alone and we get to go to Disneyland. It's like if only there's some heroes in town, and they're you know, so they're like we could be heroes, and they're just horrible at heroes. <laughs> and so the media dubs them instead of Evelyn and Melinda, evil and malice, <laughs> as they kind of destroy their way to you know getting things done. <laughs> Back so that Levin yeah. said, right? The superheroes destroy everything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> only yeah, only when the good guys show up does destruction really happen. Yeah, yeah. Or or nowadays. The good guys are doing things personally, like in a lot of the Marvel movies, mm -hmm. that are just screwing up the world because, you know, like in Ant Man, I got to get my wife. You know, <laughs> it's like I don't care if I collide this. <laughs> I don't care if it's I all personal game this. now. It's all yeah, personal I'm, game. I'm gonna get my wife, or I'm gonna get my son, or my daughter. Or I'm well, doing this for my last point with uh with you know with Flash. You know, he went back in time. Because he wanted his mom. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm going to destroy the, ruin the whole world. <laughs> yeah. you know? I'm going to destroy reality because my mom's alive in this reality. I'm like, dude, what? <laughs> dude, really? Come on. <laughs> How killer was that? Did you see the trailer? I did see the trailer. I don't know, man. That, I think, I don't know. I really think it's just more the, you know, the five six year old in me that you know was sitting in the theaters when batman came out but mm -hmm. man that that trailer with mike when i saw michael keaton and then all the scenes with him in it like the flash stuff was cool but man it was and, and they i they did that on purpose they want people to see it. it's like we got to throw in freaking fluff this thing up with michael keaton it's practically they're like promoting it like a batman movie right now you, you know but, what i really uh, liked about that trailer at the very uh, end what it's batman what? I'm Batman. Yes, I'm Batman. <laughs> but what I really liked about that trailer at the very, very end, they showed the comic books that was as the yes. source material. Yes. They said, find out, you know, Flashpoint. This is from that book series. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> you know, thank you. That's you know, give some credit to the source material. Yeah, it's something new. They, I haven't seen that in any Marvel stuff either. So. No, Mar Marvel hasn't done that with any of their stuff, and and you know, that's I think DC's trying to. 
take that approach because well they need the sales first off but yeah, you know yeah. it's they're going to want to try to bring in and what better way to do that than put that at the end of a trailer right because yeah, if someone's yeah. into it they might be like oh well i really want to see this movie so bad mm-hmm. let me get these books and then i'll have an idea of what i'm going into and right. then they get to see the movie adaptation now let's hope that the movie adaptation of those books Cross their fingers. <laughs> matches right or they're gonna be like oh man those comics were better unless that's the plan to sell books yeah you know? well or at least res- bad <laughs> yeah or at least respect the source material that's yes that's, that's what they could at that's least true. do i mean yeah. Yeah, it is just based on it i'm not looking for a panel by panel frank yeah. miller kind of uh <laughs> sin city thing <laughs> which also still did work by the way oh but, yeah, but um, um it didn't have to be panel to panel for me yeah. um uh, just respect the sort the source material. I, that's why I say, you know, that's cool. I think that's why Last of Us is doing so well right now. Yes, very yeah. true. They very, respect, very true. you know, Halo did horrible, and you would think after twenty years waiting for a Halo movie to come out, they would have. I see. I still found it entertaining to it. Huh? I'm not one well, of those people though. That's like, oh, you know, this isn't. You know, the source material wasn't fully respected. I'll still find the good in it, and I'm like, you know, I at least still enjoyed watching it. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah. It could have been any story, though. It could have been any military story. Mm, like they didn't have true. any Halo. Like the whole. Oh. <laughs> dude, dude. <laughs> messed up, dude. Why well, gotta keep pushing my buttons, Blevins? <laughs> you my buttons. don't have to keep pushing the buttons. Like that's well, not well, right. Well, we, well, we can. Yeah. Fire. What? Well, we we could also look at um, uh, Netflix Resident Evil. They didn't respect the source material either. Oh my god! They, yeah, they, they, they didn't. Do we work. have to talk about Resident Evil. <laughs> no, we don't have to talk about Resident Evil. <laughs> that uh, yeah, that was really trippy. I I stuck through it. I went. I got through the whole thing just so I could say I did it. But <laughs> you know, one way to quit it, right? <laughs> you make a lead character so unlikable. They did such a good job of making her so unlikable that yeah i didn't like it i wanted her to die every time <laughs> like, and no, she didn't. <laughs> not how it works so yeah I, i'm not rooting for this character yeah. i'll tell you though i just discovered the other night and i think it came out you know, lockwood and co yeah on netflix now i i've never i know those are novels um mm-hmm. By oh, what's his name? Is it Patrick Stroud? The author? Stroud, yeah. Stroud. Yeah, Jonathan Stroud. Jonathan Stroud, yes, yes. Stroud, and yeah. um, you know, I, I'm not sure about the source material, but the series is actually pretty the, the first episode I was like, yeah, but I kept with it and I was like, actually, this is pretty cool. It's kind of yeah. creepy, you know. Yeah, Jonathan Stroud also wrote the Bartimaeus trilogy, and that yes. was just brilliant. <laughs> yeah. So uh I really like his work. Um he's 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 one of the few writers I can, as far as that fantasy type of realm, I can really, yeah. really jump into his work. I, uh, yeah. He needs to write more. <laughs> I don't think he's done much lately. Not, no, not too much. But, you know, once I like something, I go online and I'm like, how do I get a hold of these people? Good. You know, yeah. so right now I've like LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, publicists, you know, trying to find the info to get, get him on. Because I want to talk to Alan Rich and Rich. There you go. Nice, he, nice. He's tough to get a hold of. But let's get let let's dive into the weeds of, of what we're truly, truly here to talk about. And that is some junk rabbit, man. And right off the bat, this cover, dude. Like this is the cover, man, that stops you in your tracks when you're walking through that comic shop. Uh oh man. Like, let's just talk character design for a minute. Um, before we get into a bit of the story, though, what inspired really junk rabbit, this design, this look? Why a rabbit? Yeah, yeah it's uh well well I mean the actual title just junk rabbit just kind of spoke to me as it was it's a two part name but it has two different components when you think of something like judge dread I mean that's two negatives there's a judge and it's dread yeah, <laughs> you, yeah. know, you know ghost writer you know kind of like there's a ne- yeah. not writer's not necessarily negative but whatever writer motorcycle club biker whatever. So the junk rabbit, I wanted something that was hard and edgy and yet something that was delicate mm-hmm. to, to kind of bring a little humanity into it. As far as the whole concept of it, th- this is one of those times where it wasn't this one thing that, that made me think of this. It was like a whole series of tumblers clicking in place and 
and stuff like that. And I, you know, um, I'm not, I kind of delve into cli-fi, climate fiction, you know, like mm-hmm. sci-fi, but cli-fi. I kind of get into some of that, like the empty and whatnot. But I wasn't really aiming that way until I started seeing things, you know, you just watch the news, you see the trajectory of how things are going in the world. And I have to also credit my wife with a lot of stuff. She, by watching her, it was weird. If I can go into this real quick. She um, she used to work as a sourcing uh, manager for like Pottery Barn, Crate and Barrel, Williams Sonoma, all this stuff, all this household good stuff. And she would go around the world like three, four times a year. <laughs> you know, okay. she would see all the stuff, all the factories where everything is made, all the stuff. And she sees all the negatives and everything. All these things that we in America want as consumers. And um, she did that for a while. And then she is now work. She quit that. Now she's working for a company called As You Sow. Like what you reap is what you sow. Yeah. As You Sow, where she is working with shareholders to create environmental change through companies. In other words, reduce waste, reduce climate change, reduce chemicals and food and all that kind of stuff. And it's really great. And so she provided me this two sides of a coin. I'm like, yeah, as consumers, we want a bunch of stuff, but then there's a lot of waste <laughs> yeah, yeah. from that stuff. And where does that waste go kind of a thing? And that's kind of where I, you know, I kind of got in the orbit of it. I didn't get on the planet yet, but I was in the orbit (laughs) of this idea. And I'm like, you know, what what if this, what if that? And then it just kind of, I just honed it down until I landed on that planet where, yeah, a world where we've given up and trash is one and consume and rampant hyper consumerism is still, you know, the king of the world. Mm -hmm. And we have just separated ourselves from, you know, the, the, the waste, the byproduct, the landfills, the junk, the trash, you know, <laughs> and, yeah. and, and it just made me think, well, what kind of person would live amongst that? And you, of course you think of the homeless and all that stuff like that. But then you also think, and who would protect the homeless? Who is in that city? And, and it made me think again of the heroes that we all come up, Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, they all came from errors where that kind of hero was needed at the time that was a response to the environment. And if the environment is trash <laughs> and the the entire ecosystem is just litter, then that would be the kind of hero that would rise up that. Because, you know, I love Batman and all, but I've not seen him tackle the climate change thing. He's not going to be the one that's going to represent that. That's all. He'll represent something else, but that kind of thing, I mean, I wanted to have a hero that kind of rose up out of that, was born maybe like the Bane thing in Batman. You know, I was born of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you nearly <laughs> adopted it. I was born in it. Exactly. <laughs> I was born in it. <laughs> and so that's kind of where the junk rabbit thing really took off in my head. Like, yeah, what if it was like that? And what if and then what if it was like a mysterious thing where the junk was like really part of the character? You know, mm-hmm. like then you get into the Swamp Thing territory where like it's like truly in tune with the trash around it. The trash creates the character, you know, and then you think about, yeah, the trash, where's all this trash come from? And then you think trash has been around since hum- hum- humanity. We've always thrown oh, yeah. stuff away. <laughs> We've been throwing stuff away for eons. <laughs> you know, the trash has built up over just centuries and centuries, especially in the last, you know, two centuries. We, we've really industrialized trash and it's gotten really, it's it's bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, with landfills and what's in what's in our oceans and everything. I mean, it's it's legit, the waste we made. I mean, now we look back and the trash we dig up, you know, from centuries and centuries and centuries ago, we put in museums, but you know, <laughs> the stuff yeah. we're making today is not going to be going in museums, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it became a real issue. And I, um, I just thought, Hey man, that, that's, that's going to be bizarre. And then I created another layer of story about a family that's connected to all that with these two sisters. And, uh, you know, one has a dream of living, you know, the, the better life in the cities where there is no trash 
And then you have the realist who's like, you know, no, you can't live over there. I mean, we're in a world of trash now. We've been here for generations and now we breathe methane gas, you know. <laughs> this yeah, is, yeah. We can't even breathe the air in the city and the side of that dome with the with the forced air and the climate change and all that stuff. You know, we're we're living in a whole different reality now. And and I just wanted to have this whole fun with uh seeing it from their point of view. Again, I like I don't like just people as set dressing. I want to see how people are living on the ground level and how that hero affects them. So yeah. and you did you did a great I'm gonna bring it up now. We're not gonna go too oh. deep into it, but okay. um you know you oh, yeah. you know obviously we have this amazing cover which is just just catches you and and there's variant covers that that you have as well. I mean I have a couple of them up here. Mm -hmm. Um you know, so th there's some variant covers that are going to be, you know, part of this when it, when it comes out. But like, you just bring us right into the trash. Yes. Yeah. It starts in the we're born in the trash. We're born in the trash. <laughs> we're born yeah. in the trash. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and but what I love is the detail you put into Dude, this. I was, I, I mean, was just going to ask that. Like, it's crazy. And, and and actually, what I love too is like you talk about the the trash throughout the centuries and yes. and you you just break it down as we dive down this pile of trash we're going through this the centuries that you're explaining on how we've always built trash i mean you you know it looks like you know uh we got you know egypt knights you know a model a model t whatever you want to call it you know mm -hmm. a whale <laughs> you, you know yeah. it's just you break it down and then you know the cars then you come over you know the gas and then right down to here we're getting more modern and modern you know statue of liberty i just it's great the and then you end it with you know what the state of the of the united states is and we've got the united states right here yeah yeah i kind of filtered it all down to yeah. shape the united states as i mean because right now we're shipping like good tons and tons of our trash to other countries uh to, for them to deal with if 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 India and a lot of parts in Africa said, you know, we're not going to take your trash anymore, we would have to figure out what to do with it. <laughs> trash doesn't just go away. It really cannot go away. We can't just shoot it in the space either. There's just way too much. It's just, and it, you know, it, it leaks into the waterways. It saturates the ground. It's in the air. You know, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's just, um, yeah. So I wanted to point out, I tried to, you know, in, in this little monologue here, go through how then they you know humans separated into domes and all this stuff and if you're rich enough you can get into the dome <laughs> yeah. you know and then and then the separation of the trash is not just of trash it's also of people you know the undesirables the homeless you know <laughs> yeah. whatever if you don't fit in that dome you're you're out you know it's the have and the have nots basically yeah. so uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just just dissecting this first page I mean, I think it's incredible. You have like the trash truck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course, you have Amazon, who's shipping stuff everywhere. Yeah. I think it's a, a, a Amazon truck. That's dumping I, trash out of the back. Yeah, of the yeah. Truck. And then yeah, you have yeah. on the back of the on the back of the trash, the back of the dumpster, you have like the throw the stuff in the trash little uh, image. Yeah. But, it's kind but of, the, yeah. the thing that I loved, the thing that I loved most though, is over here in the right hand corner. No homeless sign. <laughs> yes. No homeless. No, no homeless in the dome. Yeah. yeah. And it, yeah. it goes it goes off of the idea of a lot of us, we have no idea what happens to the trash once we throw it away. We don't know where it goes. And we have an idea, but we have no idea where it goes, you know, and we don't know how people live on the streets. And you know, we have a whole separate idea and view of it's just another world. <laughs> yeah. It really is. You know, it's just, and I wanted to explore that world. So, uh, yeah, this guy, he's, he's kind of doing like this dark tourism thing where he's, you know, he's from the dome and he's going out. He's like, you know, a jackass kind of guy yeah. where he's, you know, filming stuff, you know, to, to like an influencer an type. He's an influencer. Right? He's a YouTube influencer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Shock jock influencer type. Look, yeah. I'm out here doing this, blah, blah, blah. And he's got his selfie drone flying around him and all this stuff. <laughs> and obviously and, uh, this is Florida because you got Epcot there. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I just started using a lot of domes in a yeah. lot of the cities. Yeah. And, uh, I'm just making a joke, sorry. Yeah, yeah it's good. <laughs> but yeah, as you see also, I tried to create this weird palette of outside is all brown, inside is all blue. Yeah. 
<laughs> Which works so, perfect though, right? Because typically when you see kind of, even in today's real climates, right? You get that smog, which has that like yellow, yellow orange hue to it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, a lot, a lot of it did change as I went through the book. So yeah. So yeah, there you go again. So a lot of stuff. Yeah. And I mean, and, this yeah, is this... like a huge metropolis inside these, this dome. Yeah. That well, guy's I... not making it to issue two. <laughs> no, he is. He, he just tossed him to the next issue. Right? Oh, he <laughs> tossed him like this year. I didn't see it. <laughs> it has a cameo as a as a kickball. Well, the, the city is also weird because I had to think if you had to leave the coastline or whatever because of climate change and all the trash was building up, and you had to make a whole new city, and you could build it from the ground up as opposed to building it on existing infrastructure, what would that look like? Yeah. So you wouldn't, yeah, exactly. So you wouldn't need a lot of the roads. It wouldn't have to be so expansive. It could mm -hmm. be more compact. It could be within this dome. Uh, later on in the this, in this series, I talk about how there's domes throughout the country. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> some domes failed. Some of them didn't work. <laughs> you know, this particular one um, on the coast does work. Yeah, and here we have, uh, uh, da -da 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 -da. yeah, we have a police inspector. Yes, in the top hat. <laughs> yeah. Umbrella, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I I tend to want to shake things up with how things might look or sound or mm -hmm. whatever in the future because we never know. You yeah. know, so sometimes people say, oh, sci-fi, everything's gonna be futuristic. Sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes the latest style might be some retro Victorian style. And that yeah. might be the big thing. You just never know. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, there's this police officer, and she walks around in the top hat and has this kind of a umbrella cane, whatever. And, uh, What's up, Hex? Hey, Hex. <laughs> you know what? Oh, yeah. This is why, I honestly, like, I love always starting off the shows with kind of, like, intro stories, especially when it's the first time we have a new creator guest on. Because, like you were saying, you, you didn't go to art school. You didn't have all this background. You right. just you know learned how to do it on your own and this is just like a prime example and i hope you know watching live or, or you know i'm sure you're going to watch this you know as it comes up as recorded but like look what you can do when you apply yourself to something you're passionate about like yeah. to me looking at your work i'm like oh man what art school did he go to you know what did he you know it, it's it's great stuff but it just shows you that as long as you're passionate about something uh and you stick with it because it's like anything art really is like a trade you know if you're a carpenter or this and that you only get better with time the more you keep up with it your art's exactly. going to get better you know your understanding of sequential art getting the angles right how positions the body are supposed to be mm -hmm. the fact that you have to learn to draw absolutely everything and for those that don't know jimmy does everything in this book it, it, it you're doing the you're doing all the all the penciling you're doing all the inking the coloring the letters i mean you're doing story. everything the story the script i mean this is it's a one-man operation here yep. and he's being published through Shadowline, jim valentino's publishing company so again you can do all this work and still be published th through really the ma a mainstream publisher um yep. but like that's that's the inspiring part of all this in what you've done, man. It's just for those that are like, think they need to go to art school. They need to do this. You just need to stick to your craft. Yes. You can find your voice, find what you're good at, hone it out. I mean, you know, I'm a jack of all trades, but master of none, but I try to make it all work together. And Oh yeah. The city. Yeah. The city, uh, one of the city views of the, yeah. <laughs> like, I love the sepia tone too. I mean, it's just incredible. Yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to. Um, I didn't want things to be bright and shiny. I wanted, um, yeah, it to be dirty and all that stuff, and uh, even the clothing. I wanted yeah. it to not be bright or anything. I, as you saw, the views of the city, everything was clean, wide open, clear, white, almost yeah. boring. <laughs> but it, but it sets the tone, right? Because you're in this. Yeah. You go into the big city, it's vibrant, it's colorful, right? Everything shines and shimmers. And then you come and you now you're now you're setting our tone mentally. Once yes. we now enter this environment, that these colors and everything that you put in there have us feeling a little depressed. But when you read along with the script, it all works. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's um it, it was weird. It was a weird 
I haven't done this style before, so I'm yeah. just trying. I'm actually playing with it as I go along here. It's just pretty bizarre. Um, yeah. I'm always trying to... new angles. Yeah, yeah, flip right through it. It's, it's fine. Yeah, and I love what you did oh, yeah. here, right? With the riot, <laughs> the riot squad guys. Yeah, little riot guys with emoji faces in a way, right? Yeah, I I was thinking what police would look like in the future, and it would be just some form of smooth kind of take because i look at cops now and they're just loaded with gear there's so much stuff on them to grab pull yank wires cords pockets zippers snaps and i'm like you know what a real riot officer should look like something you can't even grab onto <laughs> yeah. just be like a smoothed out tank <laughs> you know and uh so yeah i just wanted to go for something simplified and, and oh don't that. get past this <laughs> Don't go past this. <laughs> but yeah, um, and yeah, you can see show the rabbit. That <laughs> <laughs> gets way a huge thing, though. That's true. That's true. We're not going to go any further, everyone. But yeah, this, this see the rabbit. Look at the cover. Yeah, yeah, the rabbit. I like, yeah. I like her rabbit headdress. Yeah, that's the only thing that stays uh, constant is the white rabbit head. Uh, the rest of the body, you know, like Swamp Thing is always morphing and changing because it's just made of junk and trash and it's all melded and melted and uh, it's com constantly reforming and you know if if I was able to get a, a movie out of it yeah it would be this really weird CGI effect of trash just morphing <laughs> around it because uh, as, as was noted in the, in the beginning of the book all the trash goes through this enzyme kind of chemical bath mm -hmm. to help break it down. Well, that kind of thing can also, you know, this becomes like Spider-Man and his radioactive spider, you know, <laughs> that kind of chemicals, if mixed, you know, if something happens, well, those chemicals can react and somebody, something gets affected and becomes one with that trash. Yeah. And then you get the swamp thing kind of effect where, you know, you're just walking through trash and every, all the trash around you is part of you. <laughs> you know, and it's like when you're in a, when you're in a position where everything is so desolate and it doesn't look like there's, you know, like this is the norm for you. Mm -hmm. You see literally the grass is greener on the other side, but you can't, you'll, you'll never be able to reach that. You'll never be more than what you are, you know, right, right then at that point. And it's like, well, who, who do you worship? You know, right. do you worship the the untouchable, or do you worship one of yours? You right. know, like were you made in their image, or were you made in the image of you know from from the people that are, you know, living up life? I mean, it's again, I thought it was great. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, no, it, it really is. It's a a great book. Um, can't wait. I mean, I'm definitely gonna, or you know, I've already got this on my pool list because I want the physical copy. Um, cool. But I, I love what you did. One thing I'm curious about, I don't even know if you can answer it, but mm -hmm. Junk Rabbit, is it, are we looking at someone that's just highly skilled like a Bruce Wayne? Or are we looking at someone beyond that with a bill that does have more of a supernatural ability? Well, I, yeah, I can't, yeah, you're right. I can't answer that. Okay. <laughs> there's a lot of, there's, there's a as, you, as you saw, there's a mystery involved in all You can this. tell me after the show. There's a question of who or what is the Junk Rabbit. Yeah. And, I mean, it's even, um, as, as, as you probably, yeah, you got issue two as well. I mean, you know, I, there's even a religion built around. You know, yeah, that's yeah. yeah, that's what I was like, like, don't keep going now. Don't. Yeah, I know, right? I was like, no. You do a great job, and, and for everyone that's out there that's interested in putting this on their pull list, um, you do a great job of, like, like I think I know who it is, but then again, I'm questioning if <laughs> if if I'm right, because, you know, the way, you, with, the way everything plays out and how you have it scripted and the panel work and who's who appears when um, does have you, like, I think I know, but I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> Right, and you do a great job of that in this book. Yeah, that was that was one of the things I wanted to point out was uh, to the readers to keep them going was well, who is the or what is or who or whatever? What's the secret behind the junk rabbit? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so uh, and yeah, it's tied to this family. It is tied to these other people, and it's also we discover later on a 
bridge between the dome and the junk rabbit becomes the bridge between the people in the dome and the people outside the dome in, the, yeah. in what we call the sink or whatever. Uh, ah, oh my Our God. Cultivation, Amanda and Gunn, Code Blue, been with this dude for a while. Amanda and Gunn is the series that Jim Valentino signed me up. That was my, my very first image book. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, that was fun because he liked Cyberzone, but he didn't want to just reprint the books that I had self-published. He's like, well, what else can we do with these characters kind of thing? So I'm like, yeah, I can do all kinds of things with it. So mm -hmm. I just kind of said, again, I went to my science fiction world. And I'm like, science fiction is always like what we just saw in these huge metropolis cities and whatnot. What's Montana going to look like in the year 2070? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I set the story of Amanda and Gunn as this person who left the big city of the science fiction world to go live in Yak, Montana, which is a real town. Right. It's like a stone's throw from the Canadian border <laughs> over by <laughs> Glacier. And it's just this kind of a Twin Peaks mystery story. And she finds this underground installation there and there's robots and there's this, there's all this other stuff. And she has to dig up her old weapon. You know, it's like, like uh, the assassin that has one last job, you know, the John Wick thing. Like I, I'm yeah. retired, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, Oh, you got to dig up my gun. Really? <laughs> so, and it's all set in, in, in the, you know, the regions of Montana. It's really, Really trippy, yeah, man. And Code Blue was my version of uh, Grey's Anatomy. That's all it was. It was nice. a medical, medical drama. Uh, I just wanted to do something. That I think at that time, <sighs> ER was the popular medical drama at the time. Uh, George Clooney and all that stuff. And I'm like, why aren't there any medical comic books? <laughs> yeah. So I, I uh, yeah, those were both. Those were both in the 1990s. <laughs> like House MD comic or House mercy MD. point the only right. sci-fi that's right hospital drama that only that's lasted right. like seven episodes how about kingdom hospital that's good why are you one up in me right now that was a horror. i said, that was horror I said mercy point man but yeah yeah i, I like uh, slapping me the whole episode what are you talking about <laughs> you're about to get another one make me play it out Hey, I do, I do have, I do have one question. Like, since you brought up, uh, you know, in your story, you you had to devise like a a mystery, and you left in the book little hints and stuff to kind of like tell, you know, who basically the bad guy was at the end of the story. In in Junk Rabbit or Five Weapons? No, in Five Weapons. I'm sorry. Yeah, in Five Weapons, you you had the mystery, right? Yeah. So I did notice that there was tons of of little things that you could see within junk rabbit uh and then you mentioned the five weapons thing is i mean can you tell us is there something like that in the story like do, have you have you put little easter eggs in these giant uh <laughs> massive mounds to to kind of to kind of tell what was uh, what is going on not in junk rabbit junk rabbit i've i've hidden a lot so uh, as I say in mystery writing, there's two types of mysteries. There's the fair play mystery, and then there's the other type of mystery where things are just revealed at the end that you, the reader, viewer, never knew about. So gotcha. as opposed to the Ellery Queen or Sherlock Holmes thing where it's like, well, the clue was right there all along. <laughs> you well, just you just, just you had my brain running because there's so many places you could hide things. Yes, true. In, in, uh, in Junk Rabbit, and uh, yeah. I mean, like, no, I, 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 yeah, it was... <laughs> It's it's a good story. I can't wait to read the rest of it. No, Blevins, I didn't um uh, I didn't do it for junk right. There's things I had to hide because I'm trying to make it uh, like Niall said, you know, this mystery of who who is it? <laughs> you know, and you, you give the characters and you give clues and you give red herrings and you give whatever and you Yeah. But then there's a reveal and then the reveal is also another reveal. <laughs> yeah. nice. You know, it's like video games. This is not my final form, you know. <laughs> <laughs> level up, level up. Level up, level up. We got some, we got some, we got some Kefka happening, some yeah. Kefka bad guys from Final Fantasy 3. I'm sorry, say what? Some Kefka bad guys from Final Fantasy 3 and 6. <laughs> it would be Kefka, nice. Kefka, he yeah. destroyed everything, then he had the next level and the next level. 
Thank you, uh, Pop Cultivation. Wow. Subbed. You get talent like Jimmy to show up. You can't be that bad. We're wow. great. We're it's great. True. We're the it's best true. comic book podcast <laughs> streaming show no one knows about on YouTube. Let me tell you what. Yeah, well, it. thanks. I appreciate that. I mean, I've actually done a lot of books. There's there's things I haven't even been credited for. The things I, I things I've forgotten almost. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> gotten more work than Blevins has ever done. <laughs> but uh, uh yeah, yeah. So thank thank you. I, I appreciate that uh, that comment. That's great. So yeah, no, it's good stuff, man. You know, I gotta tell you something. Uh, Jim Valentino, I know his name has come up a lot uh, on mm -hmm. tonight's episode, but it's imperative because of it, it it's the growth of your career. You know, who brought you know, really he brought pulled you in when you were yeah. ready to leave, he grabbed your arm and said, Hey, you can't go anywhere, you're too good. And brought you in, but what I love, what I do love about Jim Valentino, is his eye for talent yeah. and his eye for stories that aren't always your typical superhero stuff. Like he, he, right. he, it, and I know he's very picky. You know that he only publishes X amount of books each year. He's really picky on what the stories are going to be. You know what the themes are. You know he's going to have, and I, and I know he tries to kind of rotate it, right? Like mm -hmm. you know if he's got a story like this, he doesn't want to back it up with a new group of creators doing basically kind of the same thing. He mm -hmm. always finds such unique stuff, and it's it's it just shows like all your work is really unique, and I really encourage uh, the viewers out there, especially passionate comic view, uh, readers, go online order you know type in jimmy's name order the past books he done he's done because they are really good they're really good i mean you got stuff here that you know i would say like why isn't netflix reaching out to this like you're producing stuff like why bomb queen needs to happen you know <laughs> the empty would be phenomenal yeah the as, empty a CGI, like as a cgi cgi adult you know teen adult uh story you know five weapons i mean you should have your own deal with that i mean that's another great book um again dude i mean you got some you got a lot of cool stuff man well thank you i i i appreciate that it's it's i'm just doing my stuff i'm yeah. not a big lister or anything like that i'm just doing my stuff and valentino he he's 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 great he really the thing about valentino is that he's creator first he's yeah speaking about the creators not just um you know, a franchise or anything like that. He's, he's, you know, he, he knows the creators have the ideas that might be, who knows what it'll be, yeah. <laughs> but he's, you know, he's finding those creators and that's, that's the important part. It's not, yeah. I, I mean, really it's hard, it's hard to put in the words sometimes, but he's been a, 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 just a really good friend and, and a really good mentor to me. Um, that's really, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, uh, I, I mean, I mean, I, I went, I even had some Marvel work I did. And, and after that, I just went straight back to image. <laughs> you know, I could have used that as a foothold. You know, I did a Wolverine book and all that. And uh, I could have, I could have just milked that, but I'm like, Nope, kind of going back. <laughs> yeah. So um, we got a, a hangar 18 shirts. Uh, any chance of coming to a convention in Michigan this year, capital city con, great lakes con motor city con. Um, I'm not sure. I, I don't even know what I'm doing <laughs> convention wise, uh, at all. I I'm in the monthly grind mode right now and, uh, I'm doing it all myself. I wish I could, you know, hand this over to somebody else. You know, I do the pencils and somebody else does mm -hmm. inks. Somebody does the colors. Somebody does the lettering, <laughs> you know, I, I, somebody does the covers all that. I mean, I wish I could, but I'm, it all falls on me. I, it leaves very little room for me to get out to to show. I'd love to though. Yeah. I'd love do to. You, <laughs> you, are there certain conventions though you do hit every year? Like do you go to San Diego? Like are there certain conventions you try to get to to just get that get your appearance out there? Um I used to. <laughs> I'm not yeah. doing it as much anymore. Uh but yeah, being on the West Coast, I would hit WonderCon and San Diego Comic Con. Um, and there's a couple, you know, sack, sack cons, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Reno, a couple of times, you know, things within my orbit of sorts, because yeah. it's, as quick I can get in, get out and long beach. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, 
it's been hard. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. But that's it, the beauty of the internet now, right? Is yeah. you can do stuff like this. And this is like, you know, for your fans, this is like a personal panel. You know, there's a live chat. They can interact. You can tell them where to buy the books if they want stuff, right? Or mm -hmm. or how to go about it if they want signatures or whatever. And, uh, you know, that's what's great about the power of the internet. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I, like I said before, I, I'm just amazed at all the avenues that readers, creators, retailers, you know, things that just did not exist 10, 20 years ago. <laughs> you know, I, I remember being at ProCon in Oakland, California, and listening to Scott McCloud try and tell an audience of his peers, because ProCon is just an industry only thing. There's no fans or anything. It was just all the industry folks. And he was in the room trying to tell people about online comics. Yeah. And he was just getting ripped to shreds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those people from, from, from all over the industry were in this, this huge room and they're just like, that makes no sense. You can't do that. What about rights? And somebody could just print it off the internet and, well, you know, this, that, and the other. What do you mean put a credit card online? You can't do that. <laughs> you know, it's just like, oh, poor Scott. He was just getting your slings and arrows and now today it's just like you don't even blink putting your credit card online <laughs> oh yeah yeah <laughs> you know well, i mean so, marvel yeah. and dc have like their own version of netflix with their you know comic right. book apps where it's you know yeah. just like pay monthly and here's thirty thousand comics from our library have fun yeah. you know yeah, unfortunately I mean, you can't you can't fight the pirates every you know the home right. brewers and everyone they'll find a way to rip it you know exactly. and get it. so you just but, have to hope that your true fans out there are, are doing the right thing and yeah that, and that's always books. been the case to be honest that's always yeah. been the case um but yeah i mean there's there's avenues now that are just there's amazing what what's out there now. i mean comicsology and all this stuff it's just it boggles the mind, you know, now that I'm in this old part, <laughs> seeing it from the long view. <laughs> there is a there is a, a pressing question, though, that we mm -hmm. need to talk about. And Pop, Pop Cultivation actually just brought this up in the chat. And I need to know, what is up with uh, Lucky Charms and coffee? <laughs> what was? I saw that post, man. That was my wife, man. That was not me. That was my wife. <laughs> She just came up to me like, like, look, honey, look what I did. And I'm like, that's hot chocolate, right? And she's like, that's my coffee. I'm like, there's Lucky Charms in your coffee. Yep. Yeah. I feel like on. it actually might be good, though. It might be. I, if I drank it, I might be able to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I put my headphones on and kept drawing. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, my wife is, is great. I love her. Um, uh, me being an idiot, I have done zero for Valentine's Day, and uh, I'm probably in the doghouse. So, uh, but we both been really sick for the last couple of weeks. So, you can give her a shout out right here on Pop XP. That'll that'll yeah. fix everything. No, I love you. I love you, Gail. <laughs> Gail, I love you with all my heart, and you are the reason I'm here today. Thank you very much. I love you. Happy Valentine's Day. Look at that. <laughs> That's on the yeah, internet that. forever. You got to put it. We'll clip it and send away. it as the papagram. <laughs> you know? the papagram right on. Right on. Uh, actually, it's funny because uh, so today I was I text my wife and I'm like, uh, would you have anything after work tomorrow night? And she was like, we just have to take the kids to karate. I'm like, all right, cool. Because I'm streaming at eight instead of nine. And then, you know, I got like silence and I'm like, babe, you there? It's like I thought you were gonna say we were gonna do something for Valentine's Day. I'm like, I thought we decided on Friday. She's like, Well, it wasn't clear, and I'm sad now. I'm like, son of a man. I'm yeah, like, oh no, I don't do that. You win. said Friday. <laughs> you said Friday. I have everything planned for Friday. And, and then the florist called me too, like a little after that, and they're like, We're sorry, we can't get your flowers out. You can pick oh. them up or we'll deliver them tomorrow. I'm like, No, I'll go pick them up. Thank you. You yeah. know, and but they threw in a really nice box of expensive chocolates, so Right. That was a plus there, but nice. uh, yeah. So, but speaking of what's going to be going on uh, tomorrow night, which is why I'll be streaming at eight o'clock, is tomorrow night 
We've got Jim Starlin on. We're going to be talking yes. about his career and uh, highlighting Dreadstar versus the Inevitable because Jim has been dabbling in the crowdfunding arena uh, with Kickstarter, and he's been doing his you know creator-owned IP, Dreadstar. So we're going to be talking to him about his career. We're going to dive into you know his journey with some crowdfunding, see how that's going. Um, so that'll be great. And then also we're going to follow it up on Thursday. If you don't know and you're new to the channel because you're here watching the amazing Jimmy Robinson, uh, Roy Thomas, successor to Stan Lee, Pop XP is the exclusive streaming platform for him. We produce the Steven Smino Says Boom Show, which is the Roy Thomas podcast. Uh, so we're going to actually be going live with Roy Thursday night. We're going to be doing Roy's Top Greatest Comic Book Costumes Countdown. And as Roy loves to do on his lives, we got to give something away. So Roy's going to be giving away an exclusive print. This is the Hulk 181 print, uh, beautiful metallics on it. You can nice. only get this print if you attend a convention that Roy's at. You can't mail in. You can't request it. And as always, we're going to do the lap raffle. So in the live chat, you're going to type in hashtag Hulk 181. You're going to get entered into the digital raffle. At the end of the show, we're going to then pick a winner. And Roy will sign it to you. So hopefully you'll be in the chat uh, because Roy will ask you what you want him to sign on it. And then his manager, John Semino, will send it out first thing in the morning. And lastly, next week, we've got John Ramita Jr. on Wednesday. Uh, and we'll be chatting with him about his career. And, I mean, the man comes from some great pedigree. And he's a great yeah. guy, a good yeah. New Yorker, Long Island man. So, yeah. um, you know, check that out. Should be a good time. But, uh, yeah, Jimmy, it's been great chatting with you. Uh, I hope yeah. you'll come on again and hang out with us. That would be great. Yeah, actually, I have a, I have a book I probably should, since I'm talking to you guys, I probably should do a Kickstarter on a book that I've got sitting around. I think you should. You definitely should. I think yeah, you I should. Definitely, I, definitely should. Well, yeah, about... about my Denise Franken, I love listening to Brian. Shout out to my friend Denise. <laughs> what? Denise is the best. There you go. But yeah, I, I did. A, I did a book. I did a five issue story, like four years ago, because mm -hmm. I, I had this idea. I'm like, I'm gonna do all. I'm gonna do the entire book, and then I'm gonna pitch it. So I did five issues, did this one whole thing, and nobody wanted it. Oh no! <laughs> really? And it's still sit it's sitting right there. <laughs> well, you do it. Incredible. That's fun. That's incredible. The, the funny thing is, it's called Artillery, and it's about AI taking over the art world. And I'm like, really? <laughs> what? Like, I, that is I, very I, relevant I, right now. Yeah, <laughs> relevant. And I'm like, I had that like four years ago, man. <laughs> you got to do it. Yeah. So, do yeah. It. I might, I might do it on Kickstarter because I'm, uh, I mean, I don't know if you want to do it on Kickstarter. I heard there may be a new better. platform coming right. out. Platform. Wink, wink. I don't know if it's what, happening. What, 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 what? what? It's top what? secret information, but, uh, you know, I'll let you know when you're ready. Super secret, super secret, super secret, okay. top secret. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I'm gonna hang on. If to not, it, do right? Kickstarter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, thank you much, guys. This is great. Yeah. Uh, wow, that was a great that was, <laughs> that was a great tidbit there. A uh, the little hint there. About yeah. Kickstarter. Hmm. Hmm. Hang out after. I'll, I'll tell you after. Oh, all right. right. Right yeah. But uh, everyone, thanks for tuning in tonight. It's been fa fantastic hanging out with Jimmy and all of you in the chat. If you're new to the show, please look below, click that subscribe button and smash that bell to get notifications. That's so you know when we go live and we upload some awesome new videos. And if you haven't yet, you see that little thing there in the box. It says Blevins, but it also says at unboxing. Go to YouTube, type in the search on Un unboxings and uh, make sure to give a subscribe to uh, Brian's channel. And Brian, why don't you just give him a quick, uh, give him a, give him a quick uh, little snippet of what you do. Well, I, I have uh, I have been also doing a couple of interviews of my own with uh, some a little funny little funny show, but primarily my my main deal is I do the unboxings for a bunch of tabletop miniature games such as Star Wars Legion, Marvel Crisis Protocol, uh, the games from Games Workshop like Warhammer, Warhammer 40k. So uh, so I'm giving people a lot of lot of access to things that maybe they wouldn't be able to see before or give them early access to items that uh before they come out to see if they want to buy it so it's a it's pretty neat it's a review channel i, I love to be a jokester so it's always a uh, always a fun time for me and he's always here at the pop xp too so he ain't, I, I love the pop xp <laughs> this is where we get the chat 
do you do any D and D figures as well? The the D and D figures, like most of them, they don't you know ever since they did the Raul Partha all the way back in the long long ago that are metal. Uh, they Wiz Kids is a company that that makes Hero Clicks, a little tabletop game with uh, Marvel and DC characters, right. some independent right. characters. They Wiz Kids produced uh, a line of miniature figures for D and D and Pathfinder. Um, I don't I don't really unbox those or anything. Most of the time, I do gaming like uh like where the game the the miniatures itself are a game. Like right. I can show you this. I just to give you an idea. These are like right. all, the, all yeah. the items that I have to unbox and do reviews on. Mm -hmm. and then over here you have more Warhammer, Warhammer 40k. Mm -hmm. So there's a there's a lot of items to to be looked at. Mostly tabletop games are, are what I deal in. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've been helping a friend. Uh, she's a she uh, create like like. Um, Hero Forge stuff, just like complete oh, sets, yeah. dioramas and whatnot. You know, we're trying to build walls and 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 pathways and all that kind of stuff. And Dude, there's so many companies that are doing that, but I but I will tell you, like, uh, you know, there's Mantic who did a bunch of games. They did Bones miniatures, mm -hmm. but I tell you what, the the plastic pieces from from Pathfinder and Wiz, the Wiz Kids pieces for D and D and Pathfinder, there there's kind of pieces that are unmatched by anything I've seen other than these, you know, high end ones. Really? From, uh, Games Workshop. Yeah, they're they're incredible. The detail is absolutely amazing. They started doing some painted ones a while back, but I, I think they kind of went downhill. I, everyone loves the unpainted stuff because you get to paint them your own colors and exactly. But they have <laughs> bad guys. They have big giant pieces. They mm -hmm. have a, a Tiamat, like a big five head Tiamat. They have Bahamut. I mean, it's just <laughs> awesome. Nice. Love that stuff. Love it. Awesome. And uh, Jimmy, where can people go to follow you, you know, to keep up with what you're doing? I am on Facebook, uh, you know, all, all social media, just using my name, J-I-M-M-I-E Robinson. I'm not using any crazy names. <laughs> so, yeah, Facebook. Uh, I am on Twitter, um, Instagram, even TikTok. <laughs> um, uh, 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 yeah, <laughs> that's where cool. you can find me floating around. I, I, I you know, I, I'm like Valentino. I, I, I do social media here and there. You know, I promote mm -hmm. stuff. I talk about stuff, talk about crazy things every now and then. But I try to, you know, keep it balanced because I got to do a book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't get to be on it all the times so like I'd like to be. I mean, trust me, man. It's, there's a lot of cool stuff out there to look at. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, uh, yeah, I got I got to rein it in. So I, um, you can find me, yeah, at, at Jimmy Robinson. <laughs> awesome. And and lastly, so when officially is Junk Rabbit going to be on comic book shelves? April, I believe April fifth, maybe. Oh, nice. But very early April. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm currently on issue three, going into issue four. And so, um, and, and it's weird because I'm doing it in the, all these different stages. So I've done all the backgrounds all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going all the front characters all the way to the end. I'm going to do all the dialogue all the way to the end. You know? And yeah. then all the coloring I'll have to do. It's just... Uh... It's like la you're layering it, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm doing it in layers. So yeah. it was kind of weird making that. That's why advanced copy looks so weird. I, I might have sent it to you because... You know, uh, it, it wasn't consistent all the way through into issue two. So, um, uh, hey, it yeah. was easy to read yeah. still. So, yeah, I, it was we definitely good it. to see what was going on. Well, thanks. I, I definitely, uh, yeah, there's some questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. It's, I'm glad it's working because that's that's the effect I wanted was, the, you know, what's going on and. Yeah, how can I get to the bottom of it, and who's going to be at the bottom of it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank awesome. you very much. This is thank great. you, Jimmy. Thank you, Blevins. Thank you. Everyone, thanks for tuning in. Thank you for participating in the chat, everyone. Thank you for all the new subs. I think we got about eight new subs hanging out here. So nice everyone, time. have a great night. We'll see you all tomorrow, and uh, get some good comic books, people. Read some good books. Always. All see right. ya. Bye. Bye. Hey everyone, thank you for joining us on Pop XP. If you haven't already, make sure to click that subscribe button and also click the bell for notifications when we go live and we upload some awesome new content. 
Also, don't forget to head on over to Twitter and follow us at the Pop XP and over on Instagram at the Pop XP. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you soon.